Oh, yeah. G'day. Welcome to Intense. My name's Alex, and uh, I bet you wish you were as chill as I am right now. I'm out here just enjoying my new drawers, first outing with them, and we're going to have a look at how we installed them today. Now, this new drawer system was given to me by RV Storage Solutions, and I can almost hear you all groaning, oh no, not another bloody sellout, not another unbiased review. But don't worry, it's not like that. I'll tell you quickly about the deal. Uh, you're not going to have to hear me talk about how bloody good is it every five minutes on all of my videos. The deal I've done with RV Storage Solutions is for content. So you'll see this install video today, and later down the track you'll see a review on Intense. Uh, the rest of the deal is I will be providing content for them with their drawer systems. So if you want to see some cool pictures from my travels with these drawers that you might not see anywhere else, uh, make sure you go and give them a follow on the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the socials and whatnot. So that out of the way, you know what's going on here. Let's go and have a look at what they've given us. And here is what they have supplied me. This is what they call the Easy Access Combo 2 Level. So called because it has two levels. When you order your drawers, um, they're all manufactured straight out of Melbourne. And at the time I ordered these, it was about a five week lead. Um, all made, custom done. You get to choose what side your fridge is on. So I've chosen passenger side and you get to choose your drawer combination. So they've got this taller one here is called a trade height drawer. And this one is a standard height drawer, which looks about the same height as most other drawers you'd see around. I have opted to mix it up and go one of each for a good reason. When I last had a set of drawers in here, they were both about standard height. And there was a few things that I had trouble getting in, like my recovery bag. It just, it, it would fit, but it just used to scrape across the top as I opened the drawer. Same with my camp oven and my compressor I was in with no chance. That just had to kick around on the floor in the back. So trade height drawer for all those larger things. Then we've got the fridge slide uh, set into there. Looks like it'll do maybe up to a 50 litre fridge, this one, uh, but it is quite narrow. So you'd want to be careful when you're ordering a fridge slide that it's gonna suit the fridge that you've got. Also not seen here, I got the cargo shelf. So it's a piece that runs across the top here and down, acts a bit like a fridge cage and yeah, just stops things falling in and you can stack things on top. And also they've given me the drawer extension table. So that goes onto the front of the standard height drawer. A couple of clips go on the drawer and then it's just got one leg that swings down uh, it's made out of powder coated aluminium, I think, weighs 5.8 kilos. So I'll be interested to see how I can incorporate that into my camping setup. And finally, one of the things I like the most about this, you can choose steel, uh, something they call eco light, and premium alloy. Well, I went for premium alloy because I hate weight. So drawers are heavy, there's no getting around that. If you can save a little bit, do so. This is all made out of aluminium. There's also the side wings to go on and everything. That'll happen as we get it in the car. So how about we start doing that, hey? Let's see how we install these things. So the drawers come quite pre-assembled, but we have to pull them apart. Got to take the top off here, um, the fridge slide out and the base in here because we have to get to the mounting rails underneath. There's no way you could get to the bolts that hold the frame to the floor without doing this and we may have to move the rails according to the instructions anyway. In the back of the patrol, we've usually got four tie downs, one here, 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 and way over in that corner. We don't use the far corner one um, because it's inconvenient, but there's secret captive nuts in here. So in our case, we're measuring 900 mil from the center of this tie down, making a mark there, and then we're gonna cut a chunk out of the carpet. So Rhiannon's doing most of the work, holding the camera as well and doing all the hard stuff because uh, my wrist is still a little bit munted from my injury. Anyway, we've got the tops off and this thing is so light. It's incredible. 
We now have to measure these things here. So this is the two points where it's gonna bolt into the patrol. And you've got to check it with the instructions. It all depends on the vehicle you've got. So we just measure from this point here, the locking rail to the back here. And then we go down the back for the same thing. In our case, it looks like they have uh, set it from the factory from when they produced it to suit the GU. Um, I don't know if it's going to be like that for all different vehicles, but we're in luck. So we can just um, probably bolt the wings on for the side floor and then chuck it up in the back of the patrol. Now, got to drill into the floor. Apparently, these things aren't quite strong enough to hold drawers. So once you lift this frame into the car, the wings are what's going to sort of locate it in the back. So as you know, you're putting your holes in the right spots. Now, while Alex and Rhiannon from the past fit those drawers, or let's be honest, it's all Rhiannon, <laughs> let me uh, give you a bit of a history of RV storage solutions, because no doubt some of you have never heard of them. What you may have heard of is Black Widow. So RVSS are actually the same people behind Black Widow, which was started off in the early 90s. It was a booming business for a lot of years until companies started importing cheap Chinese crap and flogging it at prices that no one else could compete with. So this is a reason I'm an advocate for no Chinese crap. And I think that we're all starting to get the idea a lot more since COVID happened and uh, Australian made is becoming a bit more important. Anyway, from 2012 on, it was a steady decline as more and more people started choosing to import the crap instead of get quality Aussie made stuff. And then there was a whole corporate thing. And unfortunately the Black Widow name got tangled up in all of that. Uh, it's too complicated to go into in the video here, um, but they actually have the whole story on their website. So link down in the description if you want to know more about what happened. Long story short, or long story cut down to reasonable length, try and buy Aussie made and Aussie designed wherever you can, guys. I know there's not always the perfect product on the market for your needs, and sometimes it's easier for you to just buy imported, but where you can, support Aussie. Okay, back to this install. Oh, where are we? Um, we put the bolts in at the rear end closer to you and now we've done the front ones. Now these ones you've got to be very precise with some measurement for the GU anyway. Now 222 mil in from the side and here you've got to watch on this bolt that you don't hit the brake lines. Don't forget to put your spaces underneath. They give you different size spaces for here and here. And now we've got to tighten them all up. We're nearly at the exciting bit where we actually see it all come together in the back. So. Let's crack on with that and get to the reassembly point, hey? That's it for today. We've shown you how they're installed. They look really neat, hey? Like, so much space. It looks like there's so much more space here than before. But we're gonna find out exactly how I pack all of this. We'll, we'll come back to this video. Video's not over yet. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna load it up, so we'll just have to get all my stuff and lay it down on the ground and 
just stack it through the drawers, I suppose. Uh, in the meantime, how about you give me the thumbs up down there on that video, click that subscribe button, and double click the thumbs down if you didn't like it, just, just to show how much you hated it. Okay, you ready to take a closer look at these things? I've been playing around with them for a couple of days now. Uh, I'm not gonna go into great detail on where I've put everything, but uh, we'll have a quick overview because I've done an entire video on how I organized these drawers. So I'll upload that shortly. So here we have the kitchen drawer. Kitchen utensils and stuff back here, food, and some other kitcheny stuff. This drawer has that uh, table on it. Uh, it attaches to these tiny little clips under here. There you go, so it just hooks on there and has a leg down at this end. Now you might wonder, as did I, how does that table work with a drawer that's constantly going in and out? Well, there's a lock on the drawer. Uh, you can't quite see it on the camera, but if I just lift my finger up there, the drawer pushes in. Now we've got the big trade height drawer. I got absolutely everything in here. Tools, tire repair kit, um, snatch kit under there, winch kit under there, camp oven, the pharmacy, uh, toilet paper kit, pegs, all camping gear. Again, better run through on that in the future video. Down this side is where I'm gonna keep all my camping gear, which I'm changing to a lightweight setup. So that's gonna be chair, tent, sleeping mat, and sleeping bag. Up on the top shelf there, that's all camera gear at the moment. I do plan on cutting down some of the gear for shorter trips, camera gear on this side, food on this side. And at the moment down here, that's where tripods and camera stands and stuff will live. My old, old, old 35 litre angle lives on the fridge slide. Nice little single catch there. Nice and silent. Uh, this seems to be a lock. I'm not really sure why it's there. So that locks it off, but this one feels stable enough anyway. Now, underneath the side floor kits, haven't really packed them out yet, but it's pretty much just gonna be spare parts. They're not the most accessible area on a set of drawers. So you put things you don't need. There's a march fly trying to kill me. And here we are behind the drawers. This is, uh, so the trade height drawer is shorter than the bottom drawer and I've got this little ledge here. That's where I think I'm gonna put my batteries that used to live in the back. And a huge cavity behind the fridge. That's just my compressor at the moment but I'm actually thinking this is gonna be a good void for some water storage. So even a 20 litre jerry can fits in there nice, but I've got enough space that I think I could get 30, maybe 35 litres in that spot. Now, one more really important thing you have to know. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you, see ya.